Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Today I wanted to go back a little bit in time to the ISX 871. Still a very viable engine. It was a workhorse. It was a good engine. It was the first heavy duty engine that had after treatment on it. And they certainly had their share of growing pains the first couple of years that engine was out <clears throat> when it came to the after treatment. The engine itself was pretty solid, but uh, they had a lot of learning to do with controlling the after treatment properly. And that engine had mechanical injectors actuated by rocker arms, and it had the 870 fuel system, which means it had the, uh, the IFSM block in the center of the engine on the driver's side with the, there was a uh, fuel solenoid and timing solenoid for each bank. A bank was cylinder one, two, three, and four, five, six, uh, respectively, front and rear bank. And those fuel systems were not connected inside the head. Uh, I was told by an engineer that the ECM actually thought it was running two three cylinder engines. And uh, then they, they kind of worked together in sync. And so, uh, getting on with the fuel system, I wanted to talk about a fault code. That was not that common, but I saw a few times, and it was fault code 257. And so let's take a look at that fault. Okay, we're going to zero on down to uh, fault code 257, about halfway down the page. And you see it says inactive, two counts. And the description is that the engine fuel shut off valve driver mechanical systems not responding or out of adjustment and when you would log this fault it was because you would shut the engine off and the fuel solenoid would not completely close and inside the solenoid there's a couple valve plates and a rubber disc and a spring and if something happened in there where it didn't completely shut, then the engine would continue to run after the key was off. And that would happen because when you turn the key off, the only thing that happens immediately on the ISX 871 is key power is shut off or 12 volts is taken away from the electromagnetic solenoid that holds those fuel plates open so that fuel can flow around them and through them. When you turn the key off, the, there's a spring, a bevel spring, like a Bellevue spring in there that snaps those shut. And then once they shut, fuel pressure actually reinforces that closing and holds them shut. And the fuel pressure would drop and the engine would quit running. But if those plates don't close or if someone took the plates out, the engine would continue to run for about three to five seconds after you turn the key off. And the interesting thing about that was the engine continued to run because the ECM wasn't asleep. It was still able to completely run the engine and do everything it had to do, but it was in the process of internally shutting down. And then it would get to the place where it stopped controlling the fuel metering valve and the fuel timing valve. Uh, solenoid, I should say solenoid, fuel metering solenoid and fuel timing solenoid. And then no fuel would go into the uh, rail passages in the head and the engine would stop running. Now here we're going to look at the fault snapshot that was uh, grabbed when that fault went active. And I want you to look at the key switch state. And you can see that's right at the bottom. It says key switch and then look to the right it says First count is off, second count is off, and then go up about four lines to fuel rail measured. The first time the fault happened, there was 253 PSI of fuel pressure, and that's measured at a sensor in the IFSM. And when the key switch shuts off, it shuts the fuel off right before it gets to that sensor. So the fuel comes down from the gear pump, down the IFSM, into the shutdown solenoid 
And from there, it goes into the main housing where the fuel pressure is measured by the electronic sensor. So when the key switch was off and the solenoid should have snapped shut, it stayed open and we had 253 pounds of rail. And then on the second, we had 248. And the engine's still running. The exhaust gas pressure is up at 3031. Engine speed status is good. Engine speed is 783 and 565 respectively because the ECM is completely awake and running the engine, monitoring everything, and the key switch is off. So I wanted you to understand that uh, if you have a failure of that electromagnet, you'll get some different faults for shorted high, sometimes shorted low. Um, I think there's a fault for excessive current draw, and the ECM will shut that circuit off when it gets over 2 amps. A problem a lot of guys had is they would wire their fan um, solenoid power to that, to that wire. They would take the terminal off and add their fan wire to it if they had a problem in the truck with their fan uh, power. And when they did that, when the fan would kick on, the um, solenoid for the fan would draw a spike and between what the engine was using and that spike, it would log a fault on that and, and the truck would shut off and they'd coast to the side of the road and they couldn't figure out what was going on. And that's what it was. And Cummins eventually came out with a service topic that said, do not put anything else on that wire because people didn't understand, uh, you know, current, current loading. And they had that, they had that built in the ECM to protect that, that um, driver transistor so you didn't burn it out because if they get hot, they'll burn out pretty quick. So that was a safety built in the ECM. And, and once, that, once that shut down, um, you drove over two amps and it, the ECM shut that driver off. All, the only, all you had to do was shut the key off and wait a few seconds, about 30 seconds, and it, it would power right back up and it was fine. So uh, the last thing I want to say is, if you're ever out with one of these engines, 870 or 871, and that fuel solenoid fails, uh, the magnet fails, and you've got faults on shorted, lower, shorted, high, and they did. Uh, I changed a bunch of them. You can take the four screws out that hold it on, take all the guts out of it, which, which amounts to a spring, and two or three, I think two metal plates, maybe three metal plates on a rapid restart. And, and then put the housing back on. There's a little, uh, about a um, 3 16 thick aluminum block with two grooves for O-rings. Put that in the O-rings back on with the four screws and the magnet bolted up. And you can take the wire off if you need to or leave it on. It doesn't matter. Once you start the engine, it will run all day long. And if you shut it off, um, it'll shut down slow, but it'll shut down. So that's a good trick to keep you from getting stuck if that solenoid fails. And once you put the plates back in and replace the magnet, you do a key on the faults that are logged will go inactive. As calibrations came along and, and they, they um, added new things to the calibrations, eventually there was another fault code that would go along with this that said the engine was running with the key off. So uh, that would go inactive after you fix the fuel solenoid and ran the engine for a couple minutes, and then you could clear it. Thanks for joining me at Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.